Hallelujah. The Lamb of God this morning. Y'all know that this is the day the Lord has made. Y'all know that we are supposed to rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' name. So glad to be here one more time. Thankful that the Master is still smiling upon us. Yes. I want to thank each soul in the building today. Thank God for preachers. Thank God for the deacons, trustees, members, saints, and friends. Thank God for this wonderful praise team that has taken the loft this morning. Thank God for the musicians, Deacon Halls, please. Thank you so much for what you do. And now we thank those who are coming via phone line or Facebook live that the Lord will still be the blessing business. I thank those also again for uh, who so often bless us monetarily and in prayer, uh, whether they you send it through the P.O. box or whether you send it through PayPal or whether you come to the sanctuary, amen. God still rewards faithfulness. We thank you so much for your prayers, amen. We ask you to continue to keep people in prayer. Amen. Every week I say those names on the prayer list, but since last Sunday, those, they have changed. And so I don't know all the names, but the Holy Ghost does. Amen. Yeah. So we're going to put our faith together this morning that God will touch those here in the sanctuary, will touch those outside on the ground, touch those on Facebook Live, touch those in the community, touch this nation, Lord that God will have his way. Amen. Yeah. And I just want to stand before you before I turn it over to, to the minister. Mark, just thank you for allowing me to pastor you, to be your friend, to love you, and to pray for you. Amen. And celebrate with you. And then even sometimes to cry with you. Amen. But I, I found out, man, that God is still, still on the throne. Amen. Amen. So as we get ready to go into the service, I think y'all song is Tis So Sweet. Is that correct? Amen. We're going to turn it over to the praise team this morning. The same Deacon King's favorite hymn. Tis so sweet. <laughs> the trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet. The trust in the Lord. God bless you.
to this wonderful, wonderful praise team. Uh, <clears throat> this morning's scripture is going to come to you from uh, the book of Psalm. We're going to go to 41. Chapter 41, we're going to read verses 1 through 13. After which, I'm going to ask our um, one of our deacons to give us this prayer for this morning. If everybody has Psalm 41, stand for reading the word. And I will be reading from the NIV version. So it reads, Blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. The Lord protects and preserves them. They are counted among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desire of their foes. The Lord sustains them on their sick bed and restores them from their bed of illness. I said, have mercy on me, Lord. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice. When will he die and his name perish? When one comes to see me, he speaks falsely, while his heart gathers slander. Then he goes out and spreads it all around. Mm. All my enemies whisper together against me. They imagine the worst for me, saying, a vile disease has afflicted it has afflicted him. He will never get up from the place where he lies. Even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread, has turned against me. But may you have mercy on me, Lord. Raise me up that I may repay them. I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemies does not triumph over me. Because of my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. <clears throat> Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Amen. If you don't mind, Deacon King, um, blessing us with a few words this morning of prayer. Let us pray, most holy and all wise, truthful and righteous Savior. Yeah. We come this morning giving you praise. We come giving you worship. Yeah. We come giving you thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for blessing others as well. Yes. We thank you for your love and compassion toward the unsaved. Yes. We thank you for blessing and sustaining your anointing. Yes. We thank you for blessing those of us who are oppressed, sick, afflicted, poor and needy. Yes. We thank you for blessing our families, yes. our relatives, our friends, our neighbors. Yes. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, continue to rest, rule, and abide in us. Yes. Guide us in our deeds, thoughts, and words. Yes. Keep us in your care of protection. Yes. In these, your name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> Thank you so much, Stephen King. We're going to have a, now have a song from our praise team. <laughs>
the end of it.
Brother Ting got so excited, amen, one time in one of his services, he said, uh, I, I would rather lose my limbs and then not do the work of the Lord, amen. And so what happened a week later, he was in his study. He saw his mule that was, it was tied up in a machine that was shilling corn. And Brother Ting went out to free him. And upon freeing him, he got his sleeve caught in the machine. And it bruised his arm and ripped it out the socket. And he suffered a grievous injury. And after receiving this grievous injury, uh, a week later he died. But they say before he died, the preachers came to see him and pray for him. And one man asked him, George Mueller, who was his friend, if you look in, the, in, the, in, the, in some of the hymns, amen, he redid this song. I'm sorry, George uh, uh, Duffer, he, he redid those songs in 1611. And what, what Mueller said, what Team said was, uh, I'd rather stand for the Lord. And he told those young preachers, stand up for Jesus. No matter what, stand up for Jesus. And, and Brother George was so touched by this that he composed the song, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. And that's why I'm telling you this morning that no matter what you go through, the persecution, whatever happens, you must stand up for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the text that we are going to today, uh, Apostle Peter was the one that stood up. Y'all remember Peter, don't you? Mm -hmm. The one who Jesus called the devil, amen, in Matthew 16, because he was so busy talking, amen. He was so busy in everything, he always stood up to talk. As a matter of fact, he was in the flesh at one time. He cut a man's ear off in the garden where Jesus was trying to pray, amen. He got a knife at the prayer meeting, amen. And so when Jesus uh, restored Martha's ear, I'm talking about that same Peter, the same Peter who started cussing, amen. Now, that one was a knife told, but he was a cusser, amen. He cussed a young lady out who said when Jesus was arrested that he, that, that he was with him, ain't that right? And Jesus had already turn around, big mouth Peter, and said, I don't want to always be with you. No matter what, I'm going to always be with you. And Jesus said, be careful what you say because before the cock crows three times, you're going to deny me. Ain't that right? And when Peter saw Jesus walk in and the cock crowed, he remembered what he said. Amen. We do that. Don't be too hard on him. We say that, Lord, if you, if, if you save me because what you did for me, I'm always be there for you. Amen. I'm always be in church. I'm always be Bible study. I'm always tired. I'm always do the right thing. Ain't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we deny him. Amen. But Peter denied the Lord. He did. He did. But Jesus said, that's all right. Luke 22, Jesus said, don't worry about it. He said, Satan desires to sift you like wheat. Listen to me, y'all. This is what we got to do. He said, when you are converted, he said, I want you to go back and strengthen your brother. Sometimes when we get strong, we can't go back and fuss people down and talk about what they're doing, how bad they are. you got to look back and see where God has brought you from. Amen. And you got to pray for people until they get strong enough. Amen. Until they come back and they're like mine. And then we all come together and praise his name. Y'all see how that work? Amen. But Peter, that, that Peter, that cussing Peter, he stood up. Amen. And the difference was in John, and before all that, he was talking to Jesus, fussing with Jesus. And then he, after Jesus resurrected, y'all remember, he met Jesus. Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? <laughs> he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. He, he said, well, if you love me, feed my sheep. Is that right? Uh, and not only that, feed my lambs. Amen. And then Peter got the, uh, uh, the strong because he asked him again, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Well, what you saying? He said, well, if you, feed, if you love me, feed my sheep. Amen. And Peter got the understanding that the Lord wasn't going to always be with him. And when the Lord was resurrected, and when the Lord was, was crucified, for he then resurrected, amen, and Peter saw that he wasn't his clothes, wasn't inside that temple, amen, he began to remember some of the words of what Jesus said. But not only that, when Jesus appeared to them in the upper room, amen, he saw the fruition of what was happening. But then y'all remember, before all that happened, they stood there in the first one, amen, remember, when the Lord was wanting a witness, he, he went up in the clouds, amen. Peter was one of the ones standing there gazing up in the heaven, ain't that right? So I'm trying to tell you that in this text, it's just like the church. The first crowd is the dumbfounded people. Those are the people that when the Lord do something amazing, you don't believe that the Lord has done that, amen. The second crowd is those who doubt the Lord. You see the work God has done in your life, in your family, amen, where he brought you from, but see if you still doubt the fact that God can do what God said he could do. I wish I had one witness in there before I got started, good. Amen. But, but you had the dumbfounded, 
Israelites. You had those who you had the doubters, amen. And then you have the deniers, amen. Those who deny the fact, like Thomas, that he didn't, he didn't come. He didn't do it. Those who stayed around the tomb, he didn't resurrect, amen. They stole his body. Those today who say there ain't no God, amen. That deny the Lord until they get in trouble. And the first thing they say is, God help me, amen. God have mercy on my soul. Y'all don't believe me before I get this text. Let me step back and melt a little bit, amen. For those who say that God is not real and they believe all in science, what happened to science when they couldn't figure out coronavirus when God put us out of the church, amen, and shut down their economy and everything about their economy and the doctors couldn't figure it out. Y'all still don't get it? What about those in the stock market? Years ago they wrote a book that said God is dead, amen, and that the stock market could fix itself, amen. It might go down with ebbs and flow, but every now and again the stock market will fix itself. What happened to the stock market when COVID shut down and the airline industry shut down and everything shut down? down when God said, I want y'all to sit down. Amen. And everybody sat down and couldn't nobody move. Amen. And it's going to be like that again. If we think we are bigger than God, we can wear a mask, we can social distance, you can take your shots, but if God wants you to sit down again, God will set your behind down. Amen. You can plan to come into church, but if God wants you to understand that my house should be a house of prayer and not a dare of thieves, if he wants you to leave the church, guess what? Never talk to going to lead the church. Even the stars are going to lead the church. Trustees are going to lead the church. Members are going to lead the church. And God will shut it down. Shut down the government. He can shut it down if you want to. Why? Because he's God. The World Wide Web, they say it's like a web that the devil has dropped all over the world. I want to tell you that the earth is still the Lord and the fullness thereof, and we that dwell here in it, and God can fix anything and anybody. So before you throw folk away and act like they are gone, y'all trying to tell you God can fix every drug addict, every alcoholic, God can fix cancer, God can do it. God can make you live with diabetes, God can fix it when you ain't got a dime in your pocket. You Still can be eaten. Why? Because that's still God. I wish somebody would stand up and be a witness for me before I got in this thing. That God is still God. What can you say? Tell the preachers. Stand up for Jesus. Y'all hear me? Stand up for him. Don't worry about what people say. You got to stand up for him. I'm going to tell you now. I don't the know who would say it like this. I wish somebody saw would catch on fire. Yeah. I get so tired of dry folk in the church, yeah. hey man, who give your all to the devil for six days and get to make your way to the sanctuary and you dry as dust, say hey man, riding in God's car, wearing God's clothes, breathing God's ass, and can't even say thank you. Followers yeah. oh, of Jesus are gathered in this text in Jerusalem, waiting for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Days between digging up the section of Jesus, and now they're waiting for the coming of the Holy Ghost. And they are in a prayer meeting. And in this prayer meeting, they are praying because Judas is not with them. Peter stood up in those days. What days? The days they was waiting on the Holy Ghost to come. Amen. They were waiting patiently, doing what Jesus said in the place where he said do it. Amen. And when they did that, he still had to let them know. Because when Judas died, when Judas hung himself, and Lord willing, we'll get into it next week, the fact that he was no longer with them. And I want to tell you now that Jesus had left them, and Judas had left them. Y'all know what it's like when folk die, don't you? Folk die in your church, it changes things. Folk die in your family, it changes the dynamics of your family. But I stopped by to tell somebody today, no matter who comes or no matter who goes, you got to stand up for the Lord. If he left you here today, amen, it's for you to be a witness for him. It's to tell somebody that you can make it no matter how hard you try. It's to tell somebody that Jesus died for your sin, amen. Get up out of your wiring and begin to rejoice in the Lord. For this is the day the Lord has made. And no matter what happens, people don't come and go. Things don't come and go. But the word of the Lord will stand forever. The grass will wither and the flower will fade. But the word of the Lord will stand forever. While they're waiting, says it's 120 people. What's the significance? Why did they give us the number 120? Why did the Holy Ghost do that? It took uh, 10 men, is that right? For synagogue, right? Ten men, ten Jewish men have a synagogue. 
And here, there's 120. What's the significance? If you look at the text, 10 men in the synagogue is just like the church in the four walls of the church and won't nobody go out. 10 men is just like the church stuck in the four walls of the church and won't nobody go out and evangelize to the people out there. We just sang each other and preached to each other in here. What COVID has done is allowed us to be able to get outside the church and mingle with some folk, ain't that right, who need to hear about Jesus. Get on Facebook, amen, and phone line, and Zoom, or whatever it takes to get the gospel out to be a witness for the Lord. That's what that does. But now, 120, if you look at that number, 120, it means community. It means you've got to get outside of your comfort zone and witness to your neighbor. Have you ever had somebody next door to you? I have, and I'll give a credit to our ministry for today. Miss Emma Boone was my confidant on Sharp Road. When I was living, uh, the country God had brought me out of some things and delivered me, and folks still didn't believe me because they were still trying to make me live in the Passover, and Jesus had taken me to the Pentecost. And Miss Emma understood that because she lived beside me, and she saw my chain, and she saw my walk. And one day, she, I walked outside, she on her deck, I'm on my deck, and she said to me, and I wasn't even preaching, but she said to me, Preacher, keep living your life. Amen. Preacher, keep talking about Jesus. Preacher, keep doing what you're doing. Amen. And y'all don't know how good that made me feel, that somebody saw me not trying to grow for myself, but lifting up the name of Jesus. Now, so in this text, you got the dumbfounded. Some people still looking, waiting for the Lord to come back. You got the deniers. Peter was a denier at one time. Matter of fact, let me give you this scripture, John chapter 7, uh, uh, verse, verse 5. You find Jesus is family. It says his own brothers and his mother, they didn't even believe who he was, right? And then you have Dallas in the house. Now, they was in that place in one accord. I'm going to say this before I go out of here. That you got to be careful in the church not to be on one accord and be in prayer. Y'all know why? Because we all can look at point fingers at what we used to do. Amen. And talk about what we ain't doing now, what we ought to be doing right now. But well, you just need to take a look at yourself. Amen. Michael Jackson man in the mirror. And we do what we're supposed to do. And God will do what he's supposed to do. Y'all hear me? And I'm telling you now that somebody could have said uh, uh, Peter, you stand up telling us what to do. You denied the Lord. Amen. Matter of fact, you got a criminal record for assault. Ain't that right? They, they could have said it to him. They could have told Thomas, look at you. You done doubted the Lord and you said up to him like you so holy. <laughs> you, you, you didn't even believe that he did what he said. Ain't that right? They could have looked at Jesus' mama and said to her, you was out there with his brothers. Amen. When y'all didn't believe in who he was. Y'all hear me now? And the brothers were sitting there who wrote some of the New Testament, sister. They was in that time lifting up holy hands to the Lord. They could have pointed fingers to one another, but they didn't. They was in one place and on one accord. Amen. Somebody. They had apostles who was left was in there. Jesus' family members was in there. And the other people who he had saved and delivered, they was in the house. So Peter said, here, Matthew 26, write it down. Matthew 26 and 30, 37. He said, Lord, I will not leave you. I will always be there with you. Yeah. They could have brought that up. Ain't that right, David? But he was ready, amen, to come on the day of Pentecost and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I want to tell you today that you got to stand up for the Lord and be a witness. I ain't going to preach long because y'all already know where I'm going with this. you got to stand up and be a witness for the Lord. Let me call some witnesses since I ain't got nobody in here that can witness what the Lord can do. Benny King said, when the, when the night has come, amen, y'all do know the story, don't you? When, when the night has come, you, you know what they can You used to swoon your way off this land. And, and, and the moon is dark, amen. And, and the moon is the only light you see. Y'all know it. Y'all ain't trying to act like y'all don't know it. He said, I want you to stand by me, amen. When I said, I don't want no man no woman to stand by me, I want the Lord to stand by me. I wish I had somebody in here. Johnny McCorkin said, after you've done all you can, you just, hallelujah, plan. Apostle Paul said in the book of Ephesians, what did he say? He said, stand, having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your lords with truth, make that right, put on the whole arm of God, that you may be able to withstand the wife. Church, amen. For us to get right, amen. To understand that the Lord's name still got.
got power. Not only did his name got power, his word got power. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 3, Peter and James at the hour of prayer went up to the temple to pray as they normally did. And the man wanted arms from them. They said, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, rise up and walk. Amen. And he began to walk. Amen. He stood up as a witness for the Lord. And the people that was passing by him, going into the temple, they looked and he was leaping and praising God. Amen. And that was in the church just a dry as dust. Amen. And he was full of the Holy Ghost. If that ain't enough, Acts chapter 4. I'm going when I tell you this. Acts chapter 4, God always got a witness. So the Bible in Acts chapter 4, Peter and John had been arrested for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They said, don't preach no more in that name. And y'all know what happened? The same man that they rescued in Acts chapter 3 showed up in Acts chapter 4. And the Bible says he was a witness to them. Amen. Amen. He stood up and walked over there and he said, I don't know what happened. All I know is I can move now. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? So in Acts chapter 4, when the man stood up, Peter said to them, to the elders of the church, to the people of the church, he said to them, y'all remember the same Jesus that y'all killed, the same Jesus that y'all crucified, is the same Jesus by the power and the name that this man got up. And they said, we don't want you to preach in that name. And Peter said, we got to stand to be a witness, and I want somebody here to stand up and be a witness. If he ain't got it for you, he got it for somebody in your family. If he ain't got it for somebody in your family, he kept us through COVID, he kept us through unemployment, he kept us through homelessness, he kept you when you was in your mess, so at least you can stand up and give God a hand cup of praise. Yeah. 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 I'm done. Book of Acts is a blueprint for the church. It's what we ought to be doing. We can't do our own things. But what we're doing is some of us are saved, but some of us don't have the Holy Ghost. Because we're doing what we want to do. When we want to do it, no prayer, no thought, no coming together. Everybody respect the corners trying to figure out what to do. I'm gone when I tell you this. Have you ever seen a good wrestling match where somebody took a good whooping? Amen. And every time they tried to go to that corner and make a tag, they would drag them back. Amen. And throw them back into the corner. Ain't that right? You all never notice that when they get ready, sometimes they run over there and they make a tag. They save. Ain't that right? But sometimes they don't even do that. They roll out the ring and they get themselves together. Ain't that right? And they go over. They might make the tag and then they all come together and they talk it out. Well, I'm trying to tell somebody here, if you heard me, you got a family. Not just your biological family, but you have a church family. Folk that care for you. Folk that love you. Folk that mean well to you. And yes, you got some devils among you. Ain't that right? And if you, and if you can't throw no stone, because if you ain't one now, you probably used to be one. Okay. They don't like me now. Preach the word this season and our season. When they want to hear it and when they don't want to hear it. you got to preach the truth. And as a witness, I'm going to stand up to be a witness. When you stand up to be a witness, what you got to say is this. What do you say? Y'all know it, don't you? I, I, I swear, because some people won't do it today, will they? They put their hands on the book. Ain't that right? Uh -uh, they're, not, they're not religious. Say amen. Amen. Until they get in trouble. But, but, but you know a real witness. Ain't that right? What do we say? What, what do we say? I, I, I swear to do what? Tell the truth. What kind of truth? The whole truth. And what else? Nothing but the truth. So and how can you do it? So, so help me God. Amen. Says you feel I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you today. This is your hope today. I ask you to stand up and be a witness. Amen. Those who are with me today, I want you to raise your right hand. Amen. I'm going to swear you in and commission you into God's church. Church, and if you don't know, the doors of the church are open. Amen. Facebook Live, the doors of the church are open. Amen. Prayer line, the doors of the church is open. Members in the church, it's open. Amen. I want you to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I swear, I swear. to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Father, you heard our plea. You heard our prayer. Watch us roll. See, it wasn't too
you would pray, God, and God, you would be in the midst. And we can ask what we want. Yeah. All we want, Father, is to do God's holy will. Yeah. All we want to do, God, is grow close to you. Mm -hmm. All we want to do is please you, God. Yeah. The Bible says if we, if we please you, if we, if we lay not to our own understanding, yeah. but in all our ways, if we acknowledge you, God, the Bible says you will direct our path. Yeah. Yeah. Lead us, O oh God, in the way you would have us to go. Preachers and officers and numbers, friends, help this community, Lord. Remember your preachers who stood on the wall. Remember Pastor Dan after his surgery, bury him up. All of those who hospitals and hospitals and find their homes, God, we ask you that you would give them strength. Then, God, we ask you that you would continue to smile on us. Anything else that's not like you, God, we ask you to remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Anything we can remove, God, we ask you to give us the strength to move it. Yeah. As we get ready to leave this place, but never from your presence. As we are sworn in, God, only with the same. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. As long as you help us. Our benediction for your people is this. May the love of God the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Rest, rule, and abide. Yes, for now and forevermore. Let the faithful of God say amen. amen. Now I want you to look at your neighbor before you leave. Look at your neighbor. Find somebody. Hold me in on them. Look at your neighbor. Look at them real, real good. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, Will you take a stand? Will you take a stand? For Jesus. For Jesus. Neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Are you a witness? For Jesus. For Jesus. Neighbor. Neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Do you promise? Do you promise? To tell the truth. The, truth. the whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. So help you God. So help you God. May He continue to bless you. Amen. 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 Give God a hand clap of praise, Mr. Lee. Amen. Amen.